Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now today is Friday, praise God. And we've been talking about the spirit of boldness. You know, somehow, I, I love what I was sharing with you yesterday. See, when we begin to understand God and demonstrate his love to one another, then we'll see the glory and the power of God. Are you ready to make demands for your daily bread right now? Say with me, with all boldness. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Acts chapter 4, that's our team scripture, verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatening and grant unto thy servants. And that's the part that gets to me, you know. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Lord, we want to speak your word with all boldness. So I ask you the question, what is the word of God to you? What is the word of God to you? that you may speak the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god actually hearing the voice of god so faith comes to you when you hear the voice of god now when you hear the voice of god it stirs up boldness in you you know why have you ever asked yourself this question there are a lot, let's take our nation for example. There are lots of believers in Nigeria. There are lots of church goers in Nigeria, okay? Every Sunday, in every city in this country. Now, of course, some places, they are, you don't see them so much, but even in those places, there are areas where there are, there are every state in this nation, there are, there are lots, a good number of Christians residing there. So you find every Sunday and every other weekday, they gather, hear the word of God, presumably. Hear the word of God. And the question then is, why do we have, or why don't we have much believers acting in boldness towards God? Why does it look like we are few? Why does it seem like we pray, but we don't see the action or the results to our prayers? We gather every day, we pray for our nation, but things still keep getting worse. Why? Is it that God does not hear us when we pray? Is it that the evil or the devil is too strong that he's kind of formed a blanket? You know, that's where the whole Prince of Persia thing, thinking about it as a demonic spirit being. Maybe that spirit being has actually blocked everywhere in Nigeria. So, ah, now there, I've told you, there's no such spirit being, okay? Oh, Pastor, the Bible says principalities and powers. Where did, did it tell you? So, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So, there are spiritual wickedness that is seated in heavenly places. We'll talk about that one day. Praise <laughs> God. But let me tell you this. There is no demon that is strong enough to stop God's answer from coming to you. Yes. Now, so why don't we have, why don't we see the power of God in every place, in the office, on the street, in the marketplace. Why? And sometimes it's easier to say, come to my church. We're having healing meeting this weekend or this Sunday. Come to my church and let's believe that God will heal you. Why don't we have believers that are bold enough to lay their hands on the sick and see them recover? And, and that's just it. Someone complains of, of, of stomach, stomach ache in the office. I say, oh, come, let me pray for you. And then you lay hands on that stomach and you command it to be healed. And they say, ah, ah I'm okay. Yes. You don't need to be a pastor. 
You see, the reason is because, I'm sorry to say this, a lot of God's saints are not trained for ministry. Let me show you Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Let me read from verse 11. Now, this is a popular scripture. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what reason? Watch this verse 2. For the perfecting of the saints. Now, he spoke about the reason he gave this apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, is so that the saints will be perfected. Now, when he says the perfecting of the saints, what do you understand by that? Oh, so that the saints will be so holy and righteous, just like God. No, sir. The, the, the whole concept of holiness, the whole concept of righteousness have been wrongly taught. So, we, we think that the, the less we are found or we find ourselves doing wrong in terms of stealing fornicating lying cheating the less we find ourselves doing that then we are pleasing god not necessarily not necessarily there are societies that are so disciplined because the penalty for those things is almost death okay so you hardly find you find discipline, real discipline people. It doesn't mean that that society is pleasing God. It doesn't mean. Okay? There are societies like that. There are cities like that. There are nations like that. Where discipline has been embedded into their culture. Some of these Asian countries. So much discipline has been embedded in their culture. Someone spoke to me about Japan. There's a, there's a city in Japan that if you drop an item, if you like, go there the next day. You drop your phone. Go there the next day, your phone will still be there. Or better still, the nearest police station around there will have your phone. No one is going to pick it up and say, ah, you know, but then, you know, in our country, Nigeria, you call. They, they will pick the call. Hello? Yes, sorry. This is my phone. Eh? Okay. How much? <laughs> yeah. How much? I picked this phone. It's also a place. It, it, they will start telling you story. How they, how they tracked and how they paid 2,000 naira to go to the place where they will charge the phone first. So that uh, the phone can ring. Now the phone is ringing. You've got to give them something. And some, even after all that talk, there are some that will be bold enough, they will talk to you and still not give you your phone. There are people who have even transferred money, sending money to this account, then you get your phone. Not that they stole it from you, you misplaced it. And someone found it. Now, because the society haven't created that discipline in, in, in its citizens, that's the truth. So people just feel, I can get away with it. There are people who commit crime and just feel, what is it? Ah, yes, we go to police. I know the DPO. I know the police commissioner, they will kill the case for me. There, there are people who reason that way. So the fact that there are those other cities and cultures where people are disciplined doesn't necessarily mean they are pleasing to God. So that's why I say your concept of holiness is, is, is wrong. The reason we, we, how do I put this now? So, so it doesn't sound like I'm twisting what I'm saying. The reason we live a righteous life is so that we will be available 247 to the Lord to do the work of the ministry. Here is, here is what it says here. It says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So what is the work of the ministry? The work of the ministry is that the 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 church the body of christ be edified now what is edifying the body of christ now uh -huh. building up the body of christ okay so what is building up the body of christ so i've told you this thing many times 
the whole thing about the teaching is in the definitions, okay? If we have the definitions wrong, our whole teaching will be wrong. If we have the definitions right, then our teachings will be right. So now you read for the edifying of the body. So what does it mean to edify the body? Oh, edifying means building up. Edifying also means beautifying, clothing the body. So what then is the work of the ministry? Because it says he, he gave some apostles and and for the perfecting of the saints, so when the saints walk in their perfection, they will do the work of the ministry. And the work of the ministry is edifying the body of Christ. So, how then do I edify the body of Christ? Can you see now? Now, edifying means beautifying. Edifying means supplying. And this has nothing really to do with preaching good. This has everything to do with actions that meet the needs of the people of God. I call me Nabrakadasha. Edifying the body simply means meeting the need of the body. And meeting that need, you'll be shocked to find out. You'll be shocked that the whole talk about edifying the body of Christ is simply meeting the physical need of the body. Ah, no, Pastor Tubo, how can you equate this whole spiritual thing to, to, to meeting the needs of the people? But that's what it is. That's what it is. Now, you know, you know, let me tell you something. The way we pray and handle spirituality in Nigeria, in Africa, there are people who have been so serious and, and suddenly they travel to the Western nations. And then suddenly they realize a lukewarmness. Why? <laughs> have you wondered why? I will tell you. Because the system that is there, and this has nothing to do with spirituality, but then there's a spiritual angle to it. The system there, you know, like you've heard people say those things that, you know, they give you light, there's light power supply, so you're not even praying for NEPA. The healthcare services, once you have insurance, you walk into the hospital, so you're not saying, you know, the moment someone is hit by sickness, the first thing you're thinking about is, hey, how do I go to the hospital? How much do I have? You, insurance takes care of it. You, everything seems to be working there. So people realize that. So what am I praying for? Now, why that feeling? Why that feeling? Because, I'll tell you, because the whole purpose of God walking on the earth is to make man comfortable. Hey, but, but you know, you know, some people from Africa will now be telling you, don't be so comfortable and you forget God. But though they, someone say, you know, it's, it's difficult preaching the gospel there because what will you tell them? Say, God will, God will meet your needs. Yeah, but their needs are met by the government. And God will give you things you, you pray about in Africa. Government gives to them. No. There is something government can never give to you but then it's a pattern so that you will understand government can create loans for you okay but government don't meet your needs now in the developed world that's how satan has been able to bring forth the counterfeits okay yes satan has been able to bring forth the counterfeits over in Africa, for example, someone is believing God. Oh Lord, I want to buy the house. He prays and prays. Then a miracle happens. Say, brethren, praise God. I was believing God for three years to buy the house, and God gave me the money. Now, another person is wondering, like, why do you need to pray to God? Go take mortgage and buy the house and pay in 20 years' time. You, you, you be living in your house. Nobody will disturb you as long as you're meeting up with your mortgage payments. And get a good job. So that person is wondering at this other fellow. 
What they miss is this. Not that the guy praying for a house is making a mistake. You that is taking, the guy that is praying for a house and when God answers him, God gives him his house. Now, what does that mean? That means the house he has now is exactly the same house that is written in heaven for him because it came by faith. This other fellow who just walk into the bank and just say, hey, I, I saw a house to let and I'm interested. So look at my, my um, what's it called now? Look at my loan ability, you know, my ability to, to what, there's a name they call that thing, praise <laughs> God. Uh, the ability to pay back your credit score, something like that, yeah. Look at my credit score and, and, and like, oh yeah, okay, we can see, mm, well, you can afford it, okay, you know. All right, so we'll make the funds available for you, buy the house, and then deal settle. Now, he just saw a house to let, and then he liked it, and then he goes into the mortgage and, and gets it sorted out. He didn't pray. But you see, the problem is, you might just be living in the wrong house. Yes, you might be living in the wrong house. Hey, does he care? Does he, oh, you don't know. Does he care? Now, that's where the teaching of the word comes in. You see, so when all the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, these are the things they are supposed to be teaching God's people so that God's people will now be edifying the body. How do they edify the body? So now a child of God knows that it's not just about getting a house. I've got to be in tune with God to know which house to get. And so I go and I pray. I say, Lord, I'm looking at this house. What do you think about it? And God says, yeah, that's actually the house I want you to have. Okay, thank you, Lord. So how do we go about it? How do we go about it? Lord, I give you praise. Thank you for locating. Help me, me locating my house. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, the world system have created an avenue for you to take a mortgage. Perfect. It's good. It's there for everyone. Okay. But then you are now asking the Lord, Lord, how do I go about this? And then the Lord says, fear not, I'll bring the house. And you know, God can command somebody, give that my son to some amount of money. And then the money comes to you. You pay the deposit for the house. And in no time, God supplies the rest. And then now, now you are, you didn't just get a house. You got a house according to the heavenly principle and how did that come about it came about by the edifying of the body <laughs> it's good yeah no one is talking in, in most civilized world about though there are demon spirits there are there are so here's the point why are the saints not really being edified because we're looking at the wrong thing. So even our boldness is not being exercised in the right direction. We keep looking at the wrong things. When we think about ministry, we think about holding crusades, healing sick people, casting out devils. Ministry is far beyond that. Those are the baby stage of ministry. True, Jesus said it. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. Young believers, they will speak with new tongues. The excitement about tongues, young believers. They will take up serpents, young believers. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them, young believers. So then what is for the matured believers? Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, the matured believers is to do the work of the ministry. Because you need to be perfected to do the work of the ministry. So how do I get perfected? Perfection simply means tuning your heart and your mind with the Lord. So every job, the job of the pastor, prophet, evangelist is to teach you how to discern the voice of God, how to understand the voice of God so that you can hear and execute, hear and execute. Now, what am I hearing and executing? Meeting the needs of the people around me. That's ministry. That's edifying the body of Christ. Praise God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit of boldness. And Lord, as we look up to you for perfection, 
You are reviving in us your truths and filling us with that spirit of boldness you have promised that we will begin to edify your body and meet the needs of the children of God and the whole world. Praise God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. This is happening in our day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye.